Metallurgy started at different times across the globe, but by the first millennium BCE it was extensively practiced. The use of metals proved revolutionary. Unlike stone, metal could be worked into any shape, and broken objects could easily be mended or recycled to make new things. The time when copper smelting began in the Balkans and Western Asia. Iron was not smelted until the second millennium BCE. At first metals were valued for their attractive appearance, but their other useful properties were quickly appreciated. During early times and, in some areas, until recently, tools were shaped from stone, wood, and other non-metallic materials, by cutting or percussion, striking. When metals were first encountered, in their native, natural pure, form, they were treated as attractive stones that, instead of fracturing, changed shape when struck. The development of pottery kilns created the pyrotechnical skills, achieving high temperatures, controlling firing conditions, required for smelting and melting metals. Native, naturally occurring pure, copper, gold, silver, lead, and tin were exploited first, to make small objects, including jewelry and daggers. Copper was also used for tools. Copper could be worked by cold hammering but was easier to shape if heated until soft. Hammering made the metal brittle. Its toughness could be restored by annealing, heating then cooling slowly, though this reduced its hardness. Copper was also extracted from ore using easily smelted copper oxide and carbonate ores, rock containing metal compounds mixed with other minerals. Smelting involved heating crushed ore and charcoal in a clay furnace. Air pumped in through a clay pipe using bellows helped raise the furnace temperature. Carbon displaced the metal from its oxide or carbonate and escaped as carbon dioxide, leaving mineral impurities, as slag, and pure copper, which was denser and collected in the crucible base. When these ores were unobtainable, sulfide ores were used. Before smelting, these required roasting in an open bonfire, to drive off the sulfur as an oxide gas. For casting, smelted copper was melted, at 1,083 degrees Celsius or 1,982 degrees Fahrenheit, and poured into stone or fired clay molds or impressions in wet sand. At first, open molds were used, producing simple shapes, flat on one lace. Later, two-piece molds enabled objects to be cast in the round. More elaborate objects could be made by lost wax casting a wax model was coated in day which was then fired, allowing the wax to run out, creating a mold. Metal was the poured into the mold, which was smashed to remove the finished objects. Copper is relatively soft, so is unsuitable for heavy tools such as axes. Alloyed with certain other metals, however it becomes harder. Early metallurgists often preferentially exploited copper ores naturally containing arsenic, to produce a strengthened copper alloy. Generally alloyed in the proportion 5 to 10 percent, tin produced a superior metal, bronze but was rare. Once tin bronze was developed, around 3000 BCE in Western Asia, demand for tin became a major stimulus to trade. While bronze was widely employed for tools and weapons, other alloys were also used. For example, adding lead lowered copper's melting point and increased its fluidity producing an alloy suitable for casting complex shapes where strength was not required, such as ornaments. Ironworking developed late, as it presented technological challenges. Pure iron melts at a high temperature, around 1535 degrees Celsius, or 2912 degrees Fahrenheit. In antiquity only the Chinese achieved the temperature needed to smelt iron so only they could produce cast iron. They built blast furnaces of good refractory clay capable of withstanding high temperatures, and created the necessary draft using water-driven piston bellows. Elsewhere, only wrought iron could be produced. Iron ore and charcoal were heated in a furnace to around 1100 to 1150 degrees Celsius, or 2000 to 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature some of the impurities were given off but others remained mixed with the iron in a spongy mass known as the bloom iron was laboriously extracted from the bloom by repeated hammering and heating to high temperatures. This process was also used to shape the resulting metal and to weld, join together, pieces of iron. Heated in a charcoal fire, the iron was converted into steel, carbon iron alloy, which is harder and tougher than wrought iron. Hardness was increased by quenching, plunging the white-hot object into water to cool it rapidly, 
although this also made it brittle. This was countered by tempering, reheating and cooling slowly, reducing both the brittleness and the hardness. Successful working required a balance between tempering and quenching. Once these technologies were mastered, iron, which is far more common than copper and tin, rapidly became the main material for tools and weapons. Gold generally occurs as a native metal, often as electrum, gold-silver alloy, sometimes also containing copper. In South America and Turkey, golden objects were made from electrum, using gold's low reactivity. One method was depletion gilding, where acids removed baser metals from the surface gold's malleability makes it easy to work, using techniques such as punching, making holes for decoration, filigree, twisted threads of gold, and repose creating a raised pattern, wire making and hammering. For millennia metals have been a dominant material for manufacturing strong, durable tools and weapons, and attractive ornaments. Since antiquity, a wider range of metals, such as zinc, aluminium, and tungsten, have come into use and new alloys, such as brass and pewter, have been created. From the 16th century onwards the West also developed the technology to make cast iron. A more efficient blast furnace, using coke as fuel, was devised by Abraham Darby in 1709. Other technological advances included stainless steel and tin steel cans for preserving food. In recent centuries metals have been put to new uses, for example, to construct buildings, ships, aeroplanes, and rockets. Also, in microcircuitry. Thank you for watching. Please, like and share. And, don't forget to subscribe.